The Adventures of Ruby. The crystal city glistens in the moonlight. Three of the six moons of Summa Nula are shining down, casting weird shadows in this abandoned city. Yeah, yeah, not totally abandoned. This was once an automated city. Now the rusted slidewalks no longer move. The winds blow through the broken city. What else? Thoughts. Whose thoughts? Slimies. Oh, yeah. Slimies. Biogenetically engineered assassins out for the hunt. I can feel their mind nets sweeping the city. Mind webs. Okay, mind webs. Spun from cool, slimy thoughts that drift out to touch and freeze you in your tracks. Freeze. So they can step up and blast you away. I move silently. I move silently. I feel the mind web searching, sifting, trying to pick up human thoughts. In the faint light of the three half moons, I see someone moving across the square. She looks familiar. Wait a second, that, that looks like me. What the? They cut her down. Her circuits are oozing out of her stomach. She's not human. That's interesting, a Frankie that looks like me. Oh, she's still kicking. She's trying to get back up. Yeah, it's scaly back is turned. I step out. Steps out. I let it hear the sound of my blaster being set. Yes. It whirls and fires. I slow it down and slip aside. A beam scorches past my head. A chunk of the city flies into the sky. Slimy is surprised. It missed. It didn't know I can control time. I smile. Here's a kiss for you. My name is Ruby. I'm a galactic gumshoe. A good one. The time is the 21st century. The planet is Summa Nula, crossroads of the galaxy. And this is my story. I call it The Big Deal. Jack Flanders. Glad to meet you. This is Mojo Sam, the you-do man. Hi. How are you? Crazy. Give me some skin. Kelly, I take it you got my letter. Right. Well, the two of you may be a great deal of help to me. I mean, for my expedition. Expedition? Yeah. I guess you didn't see my letter, but... Stonehenge! Yeah. You did read my letter. No. Well... In my letter, I wrote about my studies of Stonehenge and Woodhenge and the stone circles and pre-Druid crosses and markers that can be found all over the British Isles. Well, to get to the point, I believe there's something so basic, so primitive here in this land, Africa, Morocco, and in these people. I mean, there's a raw energy alive here that's been lost in the West. Finished. Why, Jacques, are you in Morocco? Well, you see, I've been studying the energy patterns that flow through certain ancient monuments. Ah. Stonehenge, Woodhenge, Glastonbury Abbey, man-made mounds and, and stone circles. You investigate in England only? Yes. Well, no, actually, uh, Scotland, Wales, Ireland. I know Stonehenge has solar instruments, but... Uh, I am unfamiliar with Woodhenge. Well, in some ways, Woodhenge is even more mysterious than Stonehenge. Like the pyramids, it was laid out under the side of Mercury to invoke the influences of that planet. Mercury. Ah, oui. Woodhenge is an arrangement of concentric rings set out in a series of several hundred holes instead of stones. And these once held upright wooden posts. The order in which the posts were set was extremely precise and deliberate. If you can visualize this. Mais certainement. Well, there were six concentric elliptical rings, each containing posts of varying sizes and number, 
placed upon an axis that pointed to the sunrise on a summer's day. Aha, Mercury, the inventor of the lute, mm -hmm. the god of stringed instruments and music. Exactly. <laughs> Woodhenge was built for the invocation of this particular aspect of the mercurial influence. The Pythagorean, oui? You are right, ah. Countess. The Pythagoreans reproduced the sonic patterns of the universe by means of strings stretched between posts. Each string was of varying length and thickness, determined by the relative size and distance of the celestial bodies. So using this scale, the distance between the Earth and the Moon is the same distance as between the two Woodhenge centers, or one tone. So... Well, Woodhenge itself appears to have been an enormous stringed musical instrument laid out according to the plan of the universe. In other words, it Countess... It played the music of the spheres. Exactly. <laughs> Celestial harmony. Oui, oui. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's silent. Be not afraid of the universe. The sky was heavy. The air so thick I could scarcely move. The whole countryside looked as though it were suffering. The thunder began to rumble in the west and, and the sky grew black. She's standing there on the knoll, silhouetted against the sky. This silence happens very rarely. Be not Her movements were so slow and graceful. There was a pattern, a design she etched in the air. And then I noticed that she stood in the middle where the cross currents of energy flowed. Sometimes it is the sound of the wind. Her hair is so long and black. And her cape rises and falls and it, it snaps in the wind. It seemed I had stood there thousands of years before, watching this ritual being performed. There are times, though, I believe he listens to thoughts. The wind began to howl and the clouds boiled like black serpents. The Moroccans do not like owls. Do you know? What the hell is she doing? It is the way the owl looks at you. It is their eyes. They can do things to you. They are very superstitious, these Moroccans. I could feel the energy rising as though the earth itself were about to explode. And still she whirled faster and faster. Her arms stretched towards the sky. I once owned two owls. They were large. <gasps> this large! If someone was nasty, as they can be, uh, let's owls go for them. <laughs> I can see the energy. It, it swirls around her. Faster. More frantic she danced, and yet with such exactness, such precision, and still the wind rose higher. The rain fell in torrents. The fields are their messengers, sent by someone, someone who does not like them. She'll kill herself. Stop! Stop! Oh, yes. They will kill the owls if they can, and they do. And then it struck. shot off across the countryside. Five years ago, there were many owls. Today, very, very few. She's gone. And she was gone. Ah, Yahya has begun to talk once more. How nice. Nice, Yahya. Wondering if I could use you. Oh, that's a pushing motion. Hamburger earmuffs. Well, well, I suppose that would qualify. Thanks, sucker. Well, all right, just stay calm, Frankie. These babies will be in the stores while he's still grappling with the pickle.
Uncle Matrix. Glyvin, Glyvin. Welcome back, Rube, O oh, glorious jewel of Sumanula. Yeah, thanks. Step within, and we will fly away, O oh, my precious Yeah, yeah. home, Mustafa. I hear and I obey. Weather's dominated by a large Canadian low, which is not to be confused with a Mexican high. <laughs> I don't have a guitar tech like some of the guys do, and I don't carry more than two guitars. That's just in case something happens to one. Uh, I have the other. I don't do like some of the guys. I see some guy with eight and ten guitars. Oh. Cease fire. Who are you? The storyteller, Mustafa. 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 Mustafa! I challenge you, Mustafa. I am a mere study teller. A coward. Coward? No. No. One must be brave to tell studies nowadays. For it is said, if you insist upon telling the truth, you had better make it funny, or people will kill you. <laughs> ah, ah, ah.